Hello and welcome to the special edition COVID-19 Rogers TV program, informing you and your family of services and resources available during this pandemic. My name is Carol Merton and before I welcome our first guest, I would like to express a few words of thanks. For those of you who watch our programming, you will know that I like to do this at the very beginning to thank all of you in our community who continue to provide the supports and resources that are needed, to the Public Health Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Era, the Public Health Unit staff, and all of our frontline essential workers and community agencies for their ongoing efforts to keep us safe. Our businesses continue to adapt to the changes required in these unique circumstances and our community is encouraged to continue to shop local to support these businesses. We all know that the situation is fluid and we must stay vigilant. We must follow the restrictions identified in the province-wide shutdown. The number of COVID-19 cases continues to be monitored closely by the public health unit, and we are all looking forward to the vaccine rollout in Grey Bruce with great anticipation. In our community, we have forged new linkages, unique and unexpected alliances and networks as we continue to meet the ever-changing needs during this pandemic. We are all anxious to move forward and we know that those on the front lines are weary. Thank you to all of you in our community who continue to reach out to others who are struggling be sure to use 211 if you need help or you need to know more about how you can help others. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other. We will get through this together. And now I am delighted to welcome as our guest today, Richard Thomas, who's joining us to talk about the farmer's market. Richard, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Carol. It's great to be here. Thank you. Now, I have a few questions about the farmer's market, but to be honest, it makes for a better program if I don't talk and you do. So <laughs> what I would really like to know is, is about you and your role in the farmer's market, how long you've been doing it, and bring us up to speed on what the situation is now in relation to the farmer's market and to COVID-19. Okay, thanks. Um, well, I've been uh, the co-manager of the farmer's market since uh, the start of August 2019. Uh, so not very long. Uh, my wife, Morag, and I co-managed together and we had uh, about six months to get used to running the market when the big shutdown came last March. And uh, that made for quite a change in market operations. We were closed for about uh, two months. Uh, we did get an online store set up and began curbside pickup and did very well with that. We had a lot of people uh, take part. They were anxious to have the market back and enjoy all the fresh food and produce they're accustomed to. So um, then we were able to physically reopen in June of last year though we really used the market completely backwards from the way that it was set up. Uh, basically putting the vendors inside and the public outside to allow for plenty of space around for people uh, and uh, to keep things safe uh, during uh, the summer. We uh, moved back inside uh, it, towards the end of November. We stayed outdoors as long as we possibly could the weather finally got too cold and at the end of November we moved inside but our big quandary was by moving inside we only actually had uh, 22 spots but 40 vendors so we spent an awful long time thinking about how we were going to work that out and leading up to Christmas we ended up doing what we called double market days so in the morning food vendors would be here from 8 till 11:30, then we would have a break and at one o'clock reopened with all our craft vendors on site. And it worked out very well for everybody, though it did make for a kind of a long day for the market managers, I can tell you. Um, 
when we when we came up to the next shutdown on December 26, uh, we the market was in fact closed that day because it was Boxing Day. We were able to reopen uh, the following week, but without our craft vendors. So the food provided by market is considered an essential service, and so we are able to remain open selling food. Our online store remains open, of course. And um, we have a lot of protocols in place here at the market to keep people safe when they do come down and shop on Saturday mornings. Uh, One-way traffic only through the market. Masks are mandatory. Hand sanitizing at the entrance, halfway through, and at the exit. Uh, all of the vendors are masked up. Everybody uh, is very careful to keep six feet apart. And everyone who comes to market gets to know me because I'm standing at the front door with the door closed behind me. And I only let them through uh, as I can visually see that there's enough space in the market to let more people in. So. We're being very, very careful to uh, make sure that all of our uh, all of our patrons and all of our vendors will remain safe. So you mentioned that there are 40 vendors that are actually involved in the farmers market. Some are food and some are crafts. Now, these vendors come from a variety of areas, right? I mean, the farmers market is located in Owen Sound, but the vendors are not just Owen Sound City vendors, correct? That's correct. They would come from the surrounding municipalities. Uh, you know, we have uh, vendors from the Wyerton area. We have vendors from Chatsworth. Uh, they come from all around the area. So obviously you, you really did hit the ground running. You didn't have much time to get comfortable in your, in your role as co-manager before you, you really did have to the favorite word I'm hearing is pivot. You know, it reminds yeah. me of a pirouette, you know, that you had to pivot. What do you, what's the feedback from the vendors and what's the feedback from the public around all of the changes? Well, aside from the occasional person who doesn't really believe it, uh, and you know, we, we get fewer and fewer of those now, uh, at the start, we certainly did have a lot of people, and I would I would spend a lot of time to explain that uh, they people are welcome to believe whatever they choose to believe, but we are open, and these are the rules under which we are open. Uh, so, you know, I think our vendors are very thankful. Uh, quite a few of our vendors are actually uh, well over the age of 60, and certainly in the uh, in the danger zone. You know, the most vulnerable mm -hmm. people in terms of this illness. So, you know, they're very grateful that we're able to protect them. They're also very grateful to be able to stay in business because for a lot of these people, uh, this is their livelihood. They don't have any other means of making money. And, uh, you know, the first thing I learned, again, it's been a steep learning curve. Uh, after the shutdown, I think one of the first phone calls I got was from our egg producer who said, you know, the chickens are still laying. <laughs> It doesn't yes. matter what we're doing as a market, the chickens are still laying. What am I going to do with all these eggs? So it has certainly been a learning experience for me this past uh, year, uh, sort of understanding the importance of the market to the livelihoods of those folks, but also understanding the importance of the market to our community. Because one of the first things I learned um, once we physically reopened in June, you know, we stayed steady at eight to 900 people every Saturday morning coming to market. And um, that didn't ever change. We were solid right through the season. You know that normally there are down times on long weekends or slower periods. There was no slow time. And I, I always said to people, I think it was because everybody's so happy to do something that feels normal. I mean, yeah. it's not normal because market has always been a very social place, a place to come and catch up with people and to sit down and have your breakfast and a cup of coffee and catch up with friends. I mean, many people only see one another Saturday mornings at market. It, it's their <laughs> thing. And we had to forego all of that in order to reopen. But that seems to be okay with most people. They're just so darn happy to be able to do something that makes them feel normal again. So you mentioned that initially um, there were the deniers of the COVID-19 virus and that was a challenge. 
how did you challenge anyone or how did you handle the situation if people wanted to come but chose not to wear a mask? Um, did you ever encounter that? The, the only people who who didn't, well, okay, there's a couple of scenarios here, actually, now that I think about it. There are people who present and, and say that they have medical issues and therefore can't go in. Now, I've worked in media my entire adult life, Carol, and I'm pretty skeptical. So, you know, I, I'm very careful with people, but if I feel they really, truly have an issue and I know they're going to move through the market very quickly without hanging around, then we're okay with that. Um, I have had a couple uh, encounters uh, with individuals who didn't believe it, didn't feel they needed to wear a mask and weren't going to wear a mask. And I just more or less politely invited them to do their shopping elsewhere. You know, we're, we're happy to have their patronage, but at this time, these are the rules under which we're prepared to be open and everybody's gonna follow them. It sounds like you did a, a lot of um, activity around following the guidelines, um, the way you've described it. Did you connect with the public health unit to make sure that you were covering all of the bases? Or did you, how did you, how were you sure that and confident as you went forward? We have been in constant contact with Grey Bruce Public Health. They have been excellent, excellent to deal with. Uh, very responsive, very quick to get back to us when we have questions. And everything that we've done has been done sort of in unison with them or hand in hand. Why don't I say it that way? Because really, yeah. they have been a partner in all of this. So uh, when we wanted to reopen initially, shortly after the shutdown, we did present a plan to them, which we walked them through down here physically, and it was all set to go. And then the clampdown came a little harder and we couldn't open at all. So they were the ones who suggested we, we investigate online options, which I did. And we had some great uh, support through Greenbelt Markets Ontario. And um, then when we finally saw in June that we thought we would be able to physically reopen and we sort of bent our heads around what that might look like, we, we did about a six page plan that, that included drawings with arrows on them and where traffic flows would go. And we presented that. And then one Tuesday morning, we set the entire market up so that they could come down and we could walk them through exactly how we saw it working. And uh, they were great. They gave us suggestions on things that we could do uh, to improve our traffic flow and uh, keep everybody safe. and. Uh, and certainly when we moved indoors in December again, or in, in late November again, I was in touch with public health. And it was actually quite gratifying because their response was, you know what? We know you know what you're doing. We know you know how to keep people safe. So please go ahead. And, uh, and then we did have our annual inspection in December, which is an inspection of the food vendors. And we got a nice compliment from our inspector who said that we had it just right. And, and that's the kind of encouragement that's so helpful when you're working through all of these challenges and all of the extra work that you have to do. So a couple of thoughts and questions. I understand that the food vendors are perhaps, um, you have taken now the food safety handling course, correct, at, at the health unit? Yes, all of our food vendors, vendors have to have that course in order to uh, sell food here at the market. So that's a way of assuring the public of, of the knowledge and, and the safety around the food handling, for sure, which I think is a great thing, really good thing. Well, a market is like, is like any business, even though we're comprised of a, we're a collective, really, of smaller businesses who come together under one roof. I mean, in my business, I wouldn't stay in business very long if I was... Uh, delivering a defective product. And I mean, it's it's not much different here at the market. You know, the safety of the public is certainly our paramount concern. So people who wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, go online, how would they do that? Or how do they access ordering online? 
Well, all they have to do is go to the Owen Sound Farmers Market website, which is owensoundfarmersmarket.ca, and click on Shop Now. And that'll take them directly to uh, our, our local line site. So we partnered with a company in Waterloo called Local Line. Uh, when we set up our online store, they are specific to farmers markets and agricultural applications in terms of delivering your product online to your customers. I, I had an interesting chat at the start with the uh, young fellow that had started this company and they, they were only two years old uh, last year when all this happened and he said, you know, things have been going well, they've been having, you know, 10% growth now and again and uh, and he said, and then the, the first announcements about COVID came through and he said they had a week where their growth was 20% and then a week where it was 50% and then all of a sudden it was 350%. Wow. And uh, when we got in, and we were fortunate that we got there early, when we got in, there were 500 farmers markets across Canada all trying to get online at the same time. Now, remember what I said, Carol, the chickens don't stop laying just because we've closed the market. So there was a lot yeah. of uh, product backing up, you know, uh, farmers and, and our other vendors, you know, they have a, a plan that goes the whole year. They know exactly what they're gonna make, when they're gonna make it, when they're gonna harvest things. <laughs> and as soon as you shut down, not all of that goes to the wind. So we had to move very quickly to, to get them set up. So anyway, I'm sort of digressing a bit. So once you go to the local line site then, there's a full catalog. We've got uh, 22 vendors uh, offering their products uh, in the store. And um, all you do is uh, make your selections and check out at the end. You do have to register so we know who you are in case we have to get a hold of you. Um, make your selections, check out, pay with Visa or MasterCard, mm -hmm. and uh, then come on Saturday morning between 10 and 12 o'clock to pick up your uh, your uh, items at our curbside uh, location. And so at the curbside, the packages are there, the names are, are already attached to those items? That's correct. Uh, all of the packaging is brand new. It's all straight out of the box and to you. And uh, we have a, uh, if you come by on a Saturday morning, you'll see one of the 8th Street doors of the market is open and there's a table sticking out with a doorbell on the end of it. And all you have to do is ring that doorbell and the door opens, the bag slides down the table and away you go. You know, when you say chickens don't stop laying, you really do need a t-shirt for the farmer's market <laughs> with that slogan. Really, you've got it right there. Yeah, because it, it, really, it really it really does name it. So yeah. what are you hearing from the vendors around this different business model? Well, I think they're all dealing with it in their own ways. Uh, you know, when we had the initial shutdown, a lot of the vendors immediately, like within the week, uh, went to a farm gate style of delivery mm -hmm. and invited, uh, I revised the entire website to put a complete listing of who had farm gates up and when they were open. And so the people actually went out and drove around to them, which turned out to be a pretty good activity during the lockdown because it was almost the only thing you could do. Um, so the vendors have, uh, have, uh, they have been very supportive of our efforts and they've certainly been, again, grateful that our clientele have been so supportive of the market during these difficult times. I mean, I, I, I hear from people at the front door, you know, they come up and the first thing they say is, my gosh, you changed it all again this week. And, uh, you know, every week we're looking for the best possible way to form the lineups, to get people in the door quickly. And, you know, I, I, I've been saying to my vendors and to our, to our patrons that the, uh, the only constant now in our lives is change. Yeah, and isn't that true? It okay. certainly sounds like the way the farmer's market serves the community and the way that you and Moreg are helping with the farmer's market, you're also providing a public service. You are linking businesses together with the local community and helping people still connect. It's a different way, but they're still connecting. And that human connection is critical, I think. Um, we're recognizing more and more how important that is for people's mental health, emotional health, and physical health, for sure. 
How do you see the next stage going, Richard? I mean, we're, you know, we uh, it was coincidental we planned to re revive the COVID edition. We were hoping we, we didn't have to do the special edition, but we're again sitting here chatting, and this is day one of the provincial lockdown. What changes, more changes, if any, around the farmer's market do you anticipate? Well, at this point, there there won't be any changes to our setup because we're set up as safely as we possibly can be already. Um, again, food being an essential service, of course, that means that we will be able to stay open. And in fact, last year after the March shutdown, if we'd been able to figure out how to do it, we would have been able to stay open. But I think everybody was scrambling at that time to try and figure out how they were going to operate and of course it was such a shocking thing to yes. people of all generations i think yes. we haven't seen a shutdown of society like that ever in our lifetimes mm -hmm. um so for the time being it's going to be business as usual uh, we continue to uh, make uh, ask for face coverings to be mandatory for hand sanitizing and social distancing and we do have volunteers in the market who, if a uh, patron is having a bit too much of a visit with a vendor, we do move things along because uh, we do tend to get a bit of a lineup outside of people waiting to get inside. So, uh, you know, we, we do try to keep it moving. Uh, we're, we're happy to have your business and we love to see you, but don't stand around and talk. So are you saying that you have like the shepherd's hook where you're grabbing people and moving them forward? More of a cattle prod, Carol. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> you're, you're serious about the forward movement of people. Good for you. you. <laughs> Good for you. In some places, um, a lot of us are used to having to fill out that screening questionnaire and take temperature and have your contact information. Um, you, you're not describing that with the market at the moment. Do you anticipate that will be something that will be necessary? Or do you feel that that it, it will not be necessary? Well, at, at this point, we're, you know, we're following the, the, the rule of law, what we've been told to do. Uh, we have not been told to do that. Um, you know, we're we're getting three to five hundred people in about a four hour span every Saturday mm -hmm. morning, and certainly uh, that would slow us down significantly. I, you know, I, I guess there's always we'd get another volunteer with a clipboard outside in the lineup to get people through or something. But at this point, we haven't been asked to do that. Uh, so, you know, we'll we'll just sort of monitor the situation. And mm -hmm. uh, and again, you know, I, I almost laughed when you said. How's this? What are you going to do for this next phase? Because it's almost like, well, what is the next phase going to be? I mean, we yeah. almost never know what we're going to be dealing with. That's for darn sure. Absolutely. And and the shock of the initial lockdown, I mean, it was, you're absolutely right. It was quite the shock. Now people are more used to the idea. But the concern is, of course, the increasing trends of COVID-19 positive in our area and, of course, the more virulent type. And, and so it is serious, very, very serious. And it sounds like the farmer's market is doing absolutely everything it can possibly do to keep people safe and still allow them the opportunity to purchase product and to help our businesses. There's a board that also functions in the farmer's market, correct? Like there's a... Can you just speak a bit about the board? Because sure. we haven't talked about them. Yes, the, the Owen Sound Market Vendors Association actually runs the market, uh, leases the market from the city, the building from the city, and runs the market as a not-for-profit organization. And uh, Morag and I are the employees, the only two employees of that board. So everything we've done has been with, uh, with the guidance of our board, and uh, they're certainly involved in all of that stuff and uh, i just wanted to comment as well you know one of the one of the key drivers in keeping us open during these shutdowns carol is that when all you can do is stay at home and eat don't you want to have the very best and very freshest ingredients that you could have i sure do yes absolutely absolutely i, I heard an expression the other day you know that people who are home all of a sudden recognize that their clothing hugs them more. And <laughs> so healthy 
food from from locally grown uh, areas, our farmers and others, uh, and the chickens is critical for sure, for sure. Absolutely. I know we're we're almost finished with our conversation because time keep. I could talk to you for a long time, Richard, about this. How can the community continue to support you and and what you're doing with the farmers market? What would your request of the community be? I guess the best way to support the market is to continue coming if you feel comfortable coming uh, with the safety measures we have in place. Uh, continue buying goods from our uh, market vendors. And if you don't feel comfortable coming to the market in person, please take advantage of our online store and uh, our curbside pickup because we work very hard to keep that in place over the past six months, even though we have been physically reopened, so that anybody, regardless of their comfort level, can still access our products. I know it's hard to have a crystal ball, but when COVID is done, do you think that this way of doing business with the market will be the new way of doing business? Well, I think a lot of us were quite interested in the changes to the way we operated the market, sort of an inside out viewpoint. I know a lot of the people from the public really, really preferred that sort of scenario because they were outside the whole time instead of being inside the market. Um, of course, that's totally opposite the way the city designed the new uh, canopy with the roll down garage doors, but that's okay. You know, we're just adapting to things. So, you know, I guess if we see anything, we'll see us continuing to operate with that inside out format, but with a lot more vendors out in the market square, some patio tables and chairs out there for people to enjoy their breakfast and coffee. And, you know, I'm confident that we will get back to the social aspects of the Saturday morning farmer's market. Excellent. And there's always opportunities in, di in trying different things. It's just a different circumstance we're in. Richard, I want to thank you very much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. And to our viewing audience, I want to thank you for also joining us. Please take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and stay safe. Stay tuned to more programs of the Rogers TV Special Edition COVID-19 series to learn about resources and services available to you and to your family. Take care. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Hi, I'm David Chairman, host of Politically Speaking. Join me for my next show where my guests will be Francesca Dobbin of the United Way of Bruce Gray and Jill Umbach of the Poverty Task Force. And we'll be talking about COVID-19. Politically Speaking on... You know Operation Smile, alongside our medical volunteers, provides safe cleft surgery to children free...